Police have just released dash cam footage of the shooting involving Philando Castile. Now, of course, Philando Castile was the man who was shot and killed by Geronimo Yanez. And he was the individual who told Yanez that he had a licensed gun in the car. And then that led to a shooting. And of course, the police officer that was involved in this shooting was basically found not guilty by a jury. And so it's been a big story. But one thing that we've never seen is that dash cam footage. What really happened, it seemed to be a little bit of he said, she said in this situation, or he said, he said in this situation. But with the video, we now have a clear idea of how the shooting went down. I want to just warn you guys that it is difficult to watch, it is graphic. But with that said, I think it's important for you to see you know, everything that's out there regarding this case and then make your own decision as to what you think. Take a look. You have a license insurance? Yeah, sir, I have to tell you, I do have a okay. firearm on okay. me. Don't reach for it then. I'm, 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 Don't pull it out. I'm, 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 Don't pull it out. <laughs> Here's what the video clarified for me. I was under the assumption that, and based on how this story was reported multiple times, that he was asked for his ID and that was when he was reaching for his ID and he got shot then. But he had actually given the documentation to the cop before this happened, before the shooting happened. So he gives the documentation to the cop and then calmly says, which you could see in that video, I have to let you know I have a licensed gun in the car. And he says, okay, well, don't reach for it. And I'm not sure if you guys heard it, but at that point, Philando Castile says something along the lines of, I'm not reaching for it. And then immediately the shooting so, happens. So you don't see what's happening in the car, obviously, but I just want to clarify everything so people know the context of the situation. My understanding from reading about the trial was that, and you see there the handing over, is that he handed over the proof of insurance. Yes, he did. He handed over the proof of insurance and had not yet handed over ID. Oh, I see. But he'd already handed over proof of insurance. And I'm not cops. It's a dangerous job, but I mean, they'd already begun the peaceful exchange of information when you get pulled over by a cop. He had handed over his proof of insurance, right? And then I think had to re. I'm guessing now had to reach for his ID when he thought, "I'm going to tell you that there's a gun in the car." And and the bottom line is the same thing it was when the verdict came out on 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 Thursday. Uh, he just he did. Everything you're supposed to do. Mm-hmm. I mean, when you hear about uh, uh, black mothers and black fathers telling their their kids how to behave, uh, uh, you know, uh, Ida Rodriguez said it to, says it to her. She's scared every time he goes out. I'm pointing at you, Kim, because she was sitting in that okay. in that seat on Friday. Um, you know that she's scared every time and gives very careful instructions of what to do. If Philando Castillo had never said he had a gun in the car mm-hmm. and had just gotten his ID out. He, he might well still be alive today. But he thought that was the right thing to do because maybe the ID was where the gun was. Yeah. However I mean, it comes out, he did exactly what he was supposed to do. Everything that he was supposed to do and he still ended up getting killed. Why is that the first move to just like start shooting? Isn't there another method you could have used? Well, isn't there one of literally several other methods you could have used? Right, I mean, so that is, you know, a common theme that we see with a lot of these stories where cops seem to have, you know, non lethal weapons at their disposal. And for some reason, they don't immediately go to those weapons, they immediately go to guns, which is interesting because again, and I've said this multiple times before, in the past, the big story was that 
cops are overusing tasers and they were using it on individuals who had heart conditions and even though it's considered non-lethal, in some rare cases, people did die because of the tasers. And that was the big story. That was the police brutality story that made headlines, I don't know, five, six years ago. And now maybe it's because of the transparency that we have with all these cell phone videos and you know live social media videos. We have an understanding of how often lethal weapons are used. And it just all happened too quickly, right? Yeah. So he calmly tells the cop, I have to tell you, I have a licensed gun in the car. And again, we didn't show you the full video just because we don't have time to show you the full video. But you should watch the full video because their interaction prior to the shooting was calm. Totally calm. Totally it calm, escalated totally fine. So you know, quickly, almost out of nowhere. Well, you know, and it's because, look, it's because the cop thought one of the reasons the escalation is the cop pulled him over because he thought he looked like a suspect. In a, in a robbery or a string of robberies, or mm -hmm. a, a, I don't know the string of robberies, but a robbery that had happened nearby. I still want to see a side by side of if they ever caught that guy, because mm -hmm. I bet he doesn't look like Philando Castillo. But he was black and he was young and he was in a car. How you reconcile that the robber you wanted was with a woman and small child who you tragically saw get out of the other car. Mm -hmm. Go other know, side of the, the other car. Side of the, the other officer who ran away from the bullets um, came back to get the kid. I'm not saying you shouldn't run away from the bullets. That's just that's, but again, it's a, it's a slight evidence of what humans do when they're shooting; they run away. Um, and uh, so, you know, I'm not black, so I I don't have standing here. But I am a human, and and I and I and I did see, you know, you see the reaction of the cop. The cop started to cry mm -hmm. in the middle of that, right? Um, and the, the, that cop didn't want to shoot him, right? He did not want to shoot him. And that guy obviously didn't want to get shot. Nobody wanted that to happen. So the conviction, which I understand means a lot to a lot of people and understandably, I understand why he wasn't convicted. I love that the prosecutor took the case and made the case that no reasonable person under those circumstances would have discharged their weapon. That's what the prosecution maintained. The defense, it's not that hard to defend a cop who uses his weapon and says that they feared for their life. It's because the law is written in such a way that it's pretty. It's a pretty easy defense. You that cop feared for his life. The problem is, how do we change that that cop feared for his life? Right. How do we make it so that interaction? The reason I can't go in with a taser is because they thought he's pulling over a robbery suspect, and you don't go in with a taser. But how do we change those interactions so that the first, so that he's not terrified going in, and so the, and so that he's not so quick. And, and if you change the law, if it becomes easier to convict police officers, mm. some cops are gonna quit. They're gonna leave the force. They're gonna mm. think I'm too, this job is too dangerous for me to have my hands tied. And I understand that, right? But if we're gonna give people guns in the name of the state and allow them to use them, we have got to have incredibly tight controls over the use of those weapons. To me, leaving out law, leaving out just Instinctive human reaction, I think that guy lost his head too quickly. No question, yeah. no question, a lot of other ways to go there. But he lost it and it's clearly impossible to convict a cop in this country of that. So the law needs to be changed, the training needs to be changed. That whole interaction needs to start from a different place. And then on only then, I think maybe we see a reduction in these awful situations. I think that you make a really great point there. And you know, one thing that I want to add is, look, yes, the onus is on police departments throughout the country. But I also, I want to address something else that keeps coming up with these stories that I think is problematic, right? And it's, you know, society's reaction to it. And this comfort that people have with demonizing innocent individuals who have been shot and killed by cops, right? And so something interesting came across on social media yesterday that I wanted to just quickly draw attention to. There was a black activist who posted something about Otto Warmbier. He was the 22 year old who was detained in North Korea. He was sent back and he was suffering from a coma when he was sent back. And unfortunately, tragically, he was pronounced dead yesterday. Now, the black activist wrote about it on social media and said something about how, well, he shouldn't have done, you know, any criminal activity in North Korea. I mean, taking down that banner was criminal activity. So essentially um, antagonizing Warmbier for his actions in North Korea, but it wasn't meant seriously. It was meant to draw similarities or comparisons between the way, you know, 
white people are unjustly murdered and how black people are unjustly murdered. When it comes to black individuals, for some reason, people feel absolutely no problem demonizing them, picking them apart, assuming that they're thugs, talking about you know the, the amount of marijuana in their system. By the way, guess who smokes marijuana? Pretty much everyone. That doesn't give cops or anyone else the ability to run around shooting people because they might have marijuana in their system, yeah. right? But we have no problem demonizing certain groups of people who have been shot and killed, but if someone posts something about Otto Warmbier, who's a 22 year old white guy who, by the way, tragically was murdered and should not have died. And no one should ever make excuses for any type of murder, right? But if anyone makes the same type of argument about Otto, well, then people are up in arms and they're angry about it, right? And right. and that individual got criticized right. quite a bit for posting and, and, that, but he was making a political point. And right, and they and and people should get mad at that. Yeah, but abstractly, you know, not given. I I didn't get that guy's point at all, but I just read it and I was like, oh well, you got yourself in trouble for that. Right. But I didn't get it. He, you're right. That it, I'm glad you pointed that out because it, it, we do it all the time. We did it with Mike Brown. People try, but here's the deal. Good luck doing it with Philando Castillo. Right. He did. Every goddamn thing right, everything right. He let the police know there was a gun in the car that he was legally allowed to carry. This was a guy, by the way, and Philando Castillo, tragically, I think this is right. I hope this is right. I've certainly read it on social media and I think read it at the time of, the, of, of his killing. He was a professional get stopped by police while driving. He'd been stopped more than 40 times. The number 46 is what's right. in my head. 46 times that guy had been pulled over by police. 46 times, I know. right? Either he's the worst driver in the history of Minnesota or that guy just gets pulled over a lot because he's black. So he knew how to get pulled over. He was careful, his girlfriend's four year old kid was in the car. He was, he handed over the insurance. He didn't have the license right away. He warned the cop about the gun and damn it, the guy still got it. It's terrible, it's hideous. It's not about whether the, to me, but I don't have the standing for it, so I get it. You're outraged about the conviction of the lack of conviction. You have every right to be. But to me, the point is we have got to change the training and the system and the law immediately, immediately, right now, so that there are 10 of these a year and not 900 of these a year. It's yeah. more than that, though. I mean, like Anna said, that's so well intentioned and so right to do. But if we as a society just look at people and just are so quick to throw, oh, well, they're bad, they've done bad things, they're criminals. That's a problem with us. That's more a than lack that. Of empathy. We have to. I mean, when we look at Black Lives Matter and people go, "Oh, that's a hate group. Oh, it's terrible." All they're saying is, "We're human. Stop killing us. We bleed. We're just like you. Stop pretending we don't matter." You don't like ads? Well, I hear you, brother. Did you know that you can become a Young Turks member, get the full two-hour show every day on demand, plus so many other network shows, all ad-free for just ten bucks a month? Give it a shot right now, tytnetwork.com slash join.